Glory to God. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 4 says that he that observes the, the winds will not sow. The purpose of the money that God gives you is for you to use it as seed. The purpose that God gives you money is an opportunity for you to use it as seed. Money was given to the children of Israel right after they got out of bondage to Pharaoh. And saints, you don't see no report of them sowing voluntarily into Moses. But you see Moses have to call them to sow. Which shows that's a major portal that Satan was operating through so that they wouldn't make it. Satan had tricked them into missing why they had got free so that the portal could stay open over their life so that they could go back to what they was made free from. Saints, I promise you this, if you have ever backslidden in your life, it was only because you did not remember why you were set free in the first place. Saints, God always sets you free so that you can sow into him. That's, that's why he sets you free. Because saints, sin is seed sowing into Satan. Sin is where you sow seed into the devil. That's why King Jesus called him the thief. He said the thief only coming to steal. So seed sowing is into God. Sin is seed sowing into Satan. So when God set you free from Satan, he's setting you free to sow. When you miss sowing, you start sinning and it is a gradual decline. When you stop sowing, you start sinning. See, saints, today, as I stand before God, every day of my life, I got a seed in my hand. Every day. Now, now watch this here. I'm going to say something real powerful. I don't want some of you all to do that because that's not your quota yet. Because you're not supposed to be sowing $4, $5, $10, $20, you know, and, and, and stuff like that. That's not you. God got some of you all on the flow. I'm just telling you the flow that I'm in. I'm the leader. You see what I'm saying? I'm the leader, though. I'm the leader. So, so don't, 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 don't. I'm telling you every day I got a seed in my hand. Every day of over 100. You understand? Every single day. So I am a seed. I am a seed. That's why I, I release the seed anointing in my teaching so strong because I sow myself every day and I sow money every day. You see what I'm saying? So if you look at my level in the Holy Ghost, my level in the Holy Ghost is there not just because I am that I am. It's there because I'm activating it. Tongues, see, praise, all portals. And the seed is constantly nigh you. You can eat it or you can sow it all the time. The seed can be swallowed by you and it'll poison your ability to obey God in the future. When you eat seeds, something going to come up and you're going to get taken out by the devil. I promise you. Whenever you eat seeds, something going to pop up and Satan going to snatch your soul. 
Everybody in that one third was sowing into God. The minute they, they, they the minute, the minute Lucifer got their mind out of that sowing, they got snatched out. Cain, he was eating the seed. God was pitting provision in Cain's hands and Cain went it so. Cain was eating the seed and God tells him this. God says, sin lieth at the door. God didn't even say, hey, you just missing a part of the gospel. He says, sin lieth at the door. And saints, what could we track back to the reason why Cain became a murderer? Because he was a seed eater. When you eat the seed, you lose your love for God. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse four. When you eat the seed, you cannot continue in the fear of God because the fear of God is connected to seed sowing. That's why Ananias and Sapphira started casualizing Peter because they wasn't sowing. They was eating the seed. You see what I'm saying? Some of you are, you, you need to hear this. You need to hear this. So, so don't, 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 don't come. Don't come with like you already know everything. Because he that thinks that he knows everything is the one that actually forgets. That's what God is speaking to you is to keep you fresh in what you know. So if you think that you know everything, guess what's going to happen? What you do know won't even be effective at one point. But see, you need a sower. You need a sower in your life. See, I'm, I'm an apostle and prophet. That's I'm a, I'm a sower and I got results. I have manifestation and I want this to be yours as well. And, and see, I sow out of three realms. I sow out of obligation because I know that I'm so... That, that that's my flow. I, I use that obligation in purity because I'm in covenant with God. Me and the father, we, 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 we in a covenant. Then I sow out of revelation. And then I also sow out of excitement. Obligation, revelation, excitement. Oh, and the last one, I saw out of a, I saw out of a respect. Four, fourth one, obligation. You know, it's a divine assignment. Revelation. You know why you're doing it. You know, um, you know the benefits that come with it. You know the angels assigned to it. You know the demons that move in your life when you don't do it. See, see, revelation is not only about the angelic, it's also about the demonic. When you don't sow seed, there's certain demons that start to enter you, your soul. They live in your soul. Demons, they need the atmosphere to be seedless for them to find a place in your soul. Your soul is a geography, is a geographic location. That's why I say give no place. Place to the devil. It's a place. Your soul. It's a geography. And your soul, when it is seedless, demons enter. The seedless soul, the soul that refuses to sow, becomes a soul that becomes a slave. It becomes a slave. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 4. Look what it says here. He that observeth the wind shall not sow. He that observeth the wind shall not sow. 
He that observeth the wind shall not sow. You know what the wind is? It's the breath of Satan. That's why your life with Jesus will be cut off eventually because Satan oxygen is breathing CPR into you to raise up in you disrespect and dishonor. I have never seen a woman or a man make it that was a non sower. I've never not. There's not one person that you could ever call to me that say, prophet, have you seen? No, no, no. Because the wind is satanic air. Remember, he's called the prince of the power of the what? The air. Meaning that Satan has Satan's own air supply. That's why somebody can be living but dead. You say they're alive. I see their life. But see, their life is not the life that Jesus gives. Their life is really death, but it's called life because that's satanic life. You see what I'm saying? It says, he that observes the wind shall not sow. You know why? Because people that eat the seed and don't sow are taking in satanic oxygen. When you're not a sower, you take in satanic oxygen. So that means that the oxygen that you're receiving is not from the spirit of God. It's from Satan. That's why Cain murdered his brother because he was receiving from the satanic oxygen. So the satanic oxygen, listen to me, the windpipe of Satan, the windpipe of Satan, the breath of the devil. When Satan breathes into you, your soul, your soul receives murder. Your soul receives hatred, dishonor, disrespect, weariness, fatigue, troubles. In Proverbs, you find out that your soul can be troubled. You know what that means? That your soul has all type of satanic activity dominating it. That it can't be settled, it can't rest, it can't obey, it can't seek God, it can't praise, it can't give God thanks. Since we find out something powerful right now, and I've never preached this before. Proverbs, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 4. He that observes the wind shall not sow. Now, if you look at the word observe, you have the word serve in there. S-E-V-R-V-E, -E, serve. So he that observeth, he that serveth, he that serveth the wind, he that is serving the oxygen of Satan, he that is serving the life of Satan, because Satan doesn't so. To God. Willingly. There's a reason why I said that. Satan doesn't sow to God by decision. Saints, the wealth of the wicked are people that have received the windpipe of Satan. So Satan has to sow to God when Satan has to do the wealth transference to you. Because all of the wicked are people that have the windpipe of Satan operating through them. They're living off of satanic oxygen. S listen, satanic oxygen in a spiritual sense. This is what I mean. I don't mean natural. I don't mean satanic oxygen in the body. I'm dealing with soul talk. Soul talk, satanic oxygen, it, it goes to the soul. We're not dealing with the body. We're dealing with the soul. The soul is the mind. Once satanic oxygen go to the mind, the person is considered wicked, evil. Uh, in some cases, reprobate. Some cases are sinful. Some cases, children of darkness. 
some cases, uh, serpents, scorpions, things like that in the demonic, different titles. You see what I'm saying? But that's satanic wind going to the soul. He that observeth the lifestyle of Satan shall not sow. He that observeth the lifestyle of Satan shall not sow. He that observeth the life that Satan is offering them shall not sow. So when you're not sowing, just know that you're telling the devil, it's okay for you to possess me. It's okay for you to live your life in me. When you're not sowing, you're telling the, the devil, it's okay for you to sow into me. That's why people that don't stay in the sowing flow, they get corrupted by the enemy. Why? Because they called him when they started doing what him do. Satan robbed God. That's why God called him a thief. What? Saints, John 10, 10. Why do you think that King Jesus said the thief? Why would King Jesus call the angel that was Lucifer became Satan, the devil? Why is King Jesus calling this spirit a thief? Because Satan robbed God of the tithes and offering in the seed. God had put money in Satan's hands, which was Lucifer, and Lucifer decided, I ain't going to sow. I'm going to exalt my throne above God's. I'm going I'm to find, I'm I'm find a way for people to sow into me. Seed Eden came from Lucifer. I want to say Satan, rather. Seed Eden came from the devil. So when you see Eden, you invite in de demons. You, inv you invite in demons. Look, let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 2. It says, give a portion to seven and also to eight, for you don't know what evil shall be upon the earth. Do you know what evil mean? Evil spirits. It's telling you that giving it's going to protect you from the evil that's done by the evil spirits. And it's going to protect you from the evil spirits themselves. It says, give a portion to seven, also to eight. For you don't know what evil shall be upon the earth. Now, saints, hereby you find out that the seed is protecting you from evil spirits. So what if you choose not to sow? How are you protected from evil spirits? And could this be the reason why many people don't know the will of God? Is, could this be the reason why that deception is so strong? Because people don't know what evil shall be upon the earth. Why? Because they're not a seed sower. Because seed sowing actually gives you a seer's anointing to see that evil is coming. If you've been listening to my broadcast lately, I told you that the prince of the power of the air, he shall be judged and things like that. If you listen to what I said at the end, you, 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 yeah, I shouldn't have to, I shouldn't have to repeat myself on that. If you follow me real strong. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 4 says that he that observes the wind shall not sow. So you cannot sow when you're looking at something that God does not want you to be looking at. So saints, here's what Satan does. For Satan to get you to eat the seed, he, Satan has to magnify something above the presence of God. Satan got to pick something in your face that's more important than King Jesus. And Satan got to make it more urgent for you to attend to that than to the Lord. Watch what it's saying. It, it didn't say that you just not sawing. It says that you observe in the wind. 
Meaning the lifestyle of Satan is able to magnify something to you, convince you of something so that the sowing hands will stop. So that your sowing hands will not flow. Now look at Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 6. It says, in the morning sow thy seed. And in the evening. Now watch the first three letters of evening. First three letters. In the evening withhold not thy hand. If you take the first three letters of evening, you'll get the word Eve. And Eve was a woman that got deceived by the serpent. That didn't want her to sow. Didn't want the man to sow. So it says in the evening. It says withhold not thine hand. Why? Because Eve's hand was withheld. Oh my God. Jesus. Jesus. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 6 says. In the evening, withhold not thy hand. Why is Solomon warning you of this? Because Solomon prophetically knows that Eve's hand was withheld. Eve, her hand was stopped. Saints, I want to shock you with this. Adam and Eve was the beginning of the withered hand. So if, if, if. If they would have never ate the seed, Jesus would have never had somebody in the New Testament that he was healing that man's hands. Did you know why the Pharisees really got mad that King Jesus was healing that man of the withered hand? Because the same demons that was watching Adam and Eve hand wither from not sowing had to watch Jesus restore somebody's hand back to its original place. In a spiritual sense, for their hands to go back to the original place, that means that the hand will start sowing again. So saints, it was a bigger picture of why they was telling Jesus, this is the day of Sabbath. Now watch you. What was the day of Sabbath? The day of rest. So King Jesus is restoring this man's hand because when your hand get restored, you start to sow. And when you sow, remember there remaineth the rest. So they was trying to magnify, you can't heal this man because it's a Sabbath, which is a day of rest. But really, the reason why King Jesus is healing the man's hand is to give him the power to restore him back to the rest. The original Sabbath. Working hands, sewing hands. In the spirit realm, non sowers their hand is withered. So, so, so non sowers are underneath Pharisaic spirits, Sadducee spirits. And that's why people that don't sow, they criticize the gospel. They talk about people that talk about sowing because that's what the Pharisees was doing back then too. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 6. It says, in the morning sow thy seed. Now, now I'm going to give you a revelation that I never spoke about before. Why does it say in the morning sow thy seed? It's telling you that you should be seed minded even when you wake up. That's how important the seed is. God is constantly looking to see what part of you are you going to give to me? What do you have that you're going to give to me? What is in your life that you could sow it back into me? It says in the morning. That means that when you, the first thing you do when you wake up, you should be creatively looking. How could I show God my thankfulness? How could I show God that I worship him? What can I do to sow myself, my time? How could I sow my money? How could I sow my provision? How could I sow Saints, you know I got a lot of clothes. I got five. 
I got over five. I got over what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I probably got over ten. Over ten stores in my house. But guess what? Even though I got a harvest of clothes, I'm still finding a way to sow. Watch this here. I got a harvest of clothes, but I still find a way to sew the clothes. You see what I'm saying? I still find a way to sow. Why? Because when you in the morning, sow that seed minded. And when you're in the evening, withhold not your hand minded. You find a way to keep on sowing. My God. He that observeth the wind shall not sow. I got to say this again. When it get windy, it affects your eyes. You, you ever seen somebody squinting? Because the wind blowing so hard? The wind blows so hard that they start squinting because they're trying to protect their eyes? Guess what? That wind come to mess up your prophetic sight. You, you notice when it's blowing real hard, the wind blowing, your eyelash might go in your eyes, something weird. And that's what Satan do. Get you to eat the seed by sending wind your way so you can't even see how stupid you're being. You can't see how slow you acting. Because the, the wind, you're so concerned about protecting yourself from the wind that you can't see that you're not protecting yourself in the spirit. Because the seed is a mantle in the spirit realm. And every time I sow a seed, I'm telling Satan, you can't touch me or my house. You can't touch nothing that belonged to me. You can't touch my destiny, my future. You can't touch my crown. You can't touch my position. You can't touch my ammunition. People don't understand that seed sowing is a witchcraft breaker. Witchcraft can't be broken off your life until you truly worship. Sometimes the ignorance and the sins of your father, your forefathers is still operating secretly on you, even though God loves you, even though you have served God, even though you have said yes to God, there could be still secretive demonic blankets over you from your forefathers. Sowing up roots every seed that you can't see that's still in operation. Every satanic altar that you can't see that's still empowering events to happen against you. The seed goes into the ground and the ground is a location of history. I want to talk real strong on here. This is a strong prophetic anointing. The ground is a place of history. Do you understand that ground is carrying historical events and ancient spirits? Familiar spirits be in that ground. Dead spirits be in that ground. And when you start sowing and working the ground, you start turning it around. You won't let the dry bones come out of the casket. You keep it down. You say, no, no generational curse will follow me. That's what happened when you seed sowing. Let me tell you something. I'm going to shock you with this. Why did Isaac have to sow if Abraham was his father? Be, and Abraham was rich because saints, it don't matter how rich you are. The seed is how you keep demons off your life. Even though Abraham was his dad and his dad was very rich, he was still called by God to sow. Why? Because God's saying you still got stuff that you need me to break away. I need to protect you from some stuff. Not because Abraham blessed, you still going to have to sow. I give my daughter $20. You know what Zendaya do to me? She give it back to me. My daughter, I don't even tell her nothing. Saints, I try to play around with Zendaya. I say, Zendaya, here are $100. Zendaya went inside of my vehicle. I had money on the floor. Zendaya, she said, Daddy, this money. I said, Zendaya, take one up and enjoy it. She took one up and said, no, Daddy, here. That's your money. 
Already her mind is, is being trained. What you think going to happen if Zendaya get married? I bet she don't got no trouble. I bet she don't got no trouble. You know why she ain't going to have no trouble? Because she's sensitive to pleasure. What you think if Zendaya get into a, a business partner and, and have a business partner, what you think going to happen? Her business going to grow because she a sower. She not going to have to beg God to give her no customers because it shall be given is already flowing on her. The other day Zendaya gave me money. I said, Zendaya, what you name your seed? She said, um. <laughs> Woman need to learn to sow and man need to learn to sow because your manhood and your womanhood is locked up in honor. And God will not let you identify the depth and the height of who you really are until you honor him. Listen to what I'm saying. No man or no woman will operate in their true self until they have become addicted and obsessed to giving. Giving not to the poor, to the gospel. Because if you become, become obsessed with giving to the poor, Giving to the poor is not the equation to unlock God's blessing. Giving to the poor is something that God will let you do. He'll lead you to do it. But that's not the equation to unlock your life. God gives every generation, every generation, a priest, a prophet, a teacher that they could sow into. And as they sow into that prophet, they are telling God, I want your will to be done in my life on earth. The seed is receptivity of what God has created you to do and how God created you to function. You cannot receive the raw anointing of God without seed sowing. And your longevity without being offended will die if you're not a seed sower. There are thoughts that you receive from the demonic kingdom when you're not walking in honor. There are demons that begin to enter your soulish realm, even while you're sleeping, when you're not sowing. Demons can access your soul and they can talk to you when your eyelids are closed. They can give you different nightmares and dreams. They can enter your body while you're unaware because of that seed not being there to protect you. The seed is God's strategy against evil. Seed sowing will not be something automatically that you do. You will have to be coached, rebuked, reminded in, in, until you become a professional. The queen of Sheba didn't have to hear Solomon ask her for a seed. She sowed because she was a sower. Seed sowing has a mastery to it. And the more you humble yourself and you truly walk in meekness, you walk in the revelation of that seed sowing, it never dies. Revelation of the seed is a tattoo to the soul. It's a tattoo. And when you have a tattoo, it don't matter what you do, it's always on your flesh. Guess what? When you get a revelation of the seed, even when money hits your hand, that seed is on your flesh. The flesh of your hand, and you remember, I need to sow. Whenever you sow, if you sow casually, you still break in prophetic law. If you sow nonchalantly, if you don't feel virtue leave out of you, you still casually sow it. Your seed is supposed to release virtue out of your spirit, man. Your body will feel your seed sowing. Your body will give you a tangible encounter of the presence of God when you sow correctly. There's a realm of sowing that even goes to the belly that makes you nervous. There's a seed sowing that goes throughout the belly that makes you feel like something about to happen. Sometimes God has you sow seeds because there's a betrayal about to happen in your life. There's a tragedy about to happen. There's something about to overtake you that's unprepared, that you're unprepared for. And that seed will get you in the mindset of strength. You pray in tongues to sow, but when you sow, sowing will lead you to pray in tongues. I'm going to say that again. You pray in tongues to sow, but when you sow, sowing will lead you to pray in tongues. 
When you're walking in the seed, the seed will show you what other seeds you have that you need to sow. The seed will show you what other seeds are not being used by you. Your money seed will check you and tell you prophetically you need to prophesy to the dry bones. Money seed will link you and network you with every other seed that needs to be operated. So, so, so when you sow a seed, the, the, the money seed will tell you you need to get the word seed and meditate on it. You need to get the word seed and prophesy. You need to sow the seed of servanthood here. You need to sow the seed of forgiveness here. You need to sow the seed of patience here. You need to sow the seed of gratitude here. The passcode to heaven is a seed that comes from your heart. The passcode to heaven. You can enter any angelic gate. Any courtroom. Any window. Through seed. Malachi got the revelation that you enter into the windows of God through seed. Malachi got the revelation as a prophetic sower. Malachi was a prophetic saw. He was a prophetic saw and he broke open the windows of heaven and he knew how to operate in that window. Everybody got a worship window. The more you in tune with the spirit and you learning of the knowledge of God, that window becomes more real to you. He that observes the wind shall not sow. It says in the morning, sow thy seed. In the evening, withhold not thine hand, for you don't know what shall prosper. It says you don't know what shall prosper. That means that God put your prosperity in your seed. Now, how so? So the prophet brings you prosperity, and God put the prosperity in your seed. So how does that work? Either God was wrong because only the prophet can give you prosperity. Let me help you understand it. You pit the seed in the prophet. It's saying that the seed going to prosper. Why? Because you pit it in your prosperity angel, your prophet. Father, I received so an anointed all my life. Satan has blinded people from seed sowing so that their life could be cursed, unaware. Satan don't want people to remember to sow. So he sends bad reports, distractions, and things that get all of their energy into another direction so that they can forget God. The Bible said, remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get well. How do you remember him? You keep on sowing strong and your sowing should get higher. If you were sowing a hundred dollars, you should be sowing over a hundred dollars. If you were sowing three hundred dollars, you should be sowing over three hundred dollars. Whatever you were sowing, it should be going higher and higher and higher. Dog on it. If it's not going higher, that means that you going lower. And saints, when you go lower, demotion will find you. Satan will help you be demoted. Satan will help you. Saints, every time Satan tell you to rob a seed, he plotting against your provision. He plotting against your promotion. He plotting against your position. Your position got provision. And if one of them fall, the other going to fall right behind it. Most times. Because if he can affect, affect your provision, he can affect your position. Because your position going to start looking at your provision. And your provision going to start talking to your position and... Before you know it, you're not going to be operating in the position because the provision is going to convince you that your position not even there. The seed is a divine doctrine that satanic angels don't want to enter into the soul of man. Because whenever a person receives the sowing power of God, they have become replacements to satanic angels. They have become replacements to the original sons of God. Because they were sowing into God too. Becoming replacement sowers. Lord, I receive sowing grace. My seeds nowadays, they come back to me in hours. I remember seeds that I used to sow would come back to me in a month. 
come back to me in a week. Saints, I'm going to tell you like this. I'm going to be honest with you. I ain't never had to wait on God to with, with no harvest. I get harvests all the time. I, I might shock you, huh? I might shock you. But guess what? God always came through with a harvest. And guess what? God, a harvest is not one event of kindness. A harvest is a continuation of the goodness of God and the mercy of God following you. So, so why she said sometimes you think a harvest is a one-time event. No, no. A harvest means that when God brings the harvest, now he's saying my presence is here to attend to your act of worship. So I'm going to start doing things. I'm going to start giving you brain power. I'm going to start showing you how to protect your emotions. I'm going to start showing you how to act, how to live, how to move, how to have your being. I'm going to start showing you how to praise, how to protect yourself, how to keep your momentum, how to go to the next level in supernatural abilities. Why do you think that the seed that King Jesus told the parable about that they were supposed to sow? Why do you think that he called it a talent? Because saints, seed and talent go together. Your money is in your talent and your talent is in your money. So when you sow seed money, your talent is inside of that seed. So that's why you find your abilities once you sow. You can't find those abilities if you don't sow because the talent is inside the seed. The talent is the seed and the seed is the talent. They won. When you sow seed, you speak the right words. Seed sowing will correct you from saying something that will produce a funeral home. Seed sowing will protect you from speaking something that's going to activate familiar spirits. Seed sowing shows you the dead. The, uh, uh, the dead end. Of words. Seed sowing will, will give you the wisdom of not to plant death in your future with your own mouth. Seed sowing will show you how to use your mouth as a deliverance mechanism. Every time you sow a seed, you are inviting the angels of prosperity. Not only to prosper your path on the earth with decisions, but to pr prosper you in keeping God entertained with your life. Prosperity angels will keep you in the will of God so that you keep on entertaining God. Why do you think that Abraham gave his servant his prosperity angel? He said, that my angel shall go with you and prosper your way so that you can find a wife for my son. Why did he give the prosperity angel to his servant? The servant knew how to keep Abraham and God entertained. That servant knew how to entertain. So now that prosperity angel is right there because that, that servant has mastered how to entertain, how to serve, how to bring pleasure. You see what I'm saying? It says in the morning, sow that seed. So, so, so sowing has to become your obsession. You're supposed to be thinking about sowing all the time. And, and here's another demon that's going to fight you, the demon of procrastination. When you got in your mind to sow and you can't sow, it's because you're underneath demons. If you got in your mind that you want to sow and you got in your power to sow, that show that demons still got power over you. Break the power and sow. Break the power and sow. Stop making plans to sow when you got it on you to sow. Just sow. Just do it. Don't don't put in your mind, oh, oh, I'm going to sow, 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 I'm going to sow. No, 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 no. The more you wait with a seed, the more you start lusting at that seed. Any seed that I got on my hand that I wait and procrastinate with, I lust and I commit adultery with that seed. Oh, Jesus. You can commit adultery with finances. Because you lusting after that money because that money wasn't supposed to be in your presence no more. 
that money was supposed to been left your eyes. So as long as you keep on looking at it, you going, you going, you going, you going, you going. I just heard God said fornicating with finances. Financial fornication. My God. This the Holy Ghost said that. The Holy Ghost said. You don't want to have sex with your seed. Your seed is not a sex object. I want to say this. For Adam, his seed unlocked sex. For Solomon, his seed unlocked sex. But the seed is not a sex object. The seed is not supposed to be inside of you. The seed is supposed to be inside of the man of God over you. If you keep the seed too long, you're going to lust after it and you and that seed is going to have intimacy together and then you're going to create a violation in the spirit. Violation in the spirit is a call for the gates of hell to prevail against you. I want to say this. Mary Magdalene was a master seed sower and that's how she shut all of those portals to those seven devils. Those seven devils couldn't access her. Those were seven satanic kings. That's why they was called devils. Because remember, there's the devil. So devils are captains, satanic kings. She was able to break away from the gates of hell, ruling her life because she kept that seed inside of Jesus. Jesus kept his seed inside of her too. But if she didn't keep her seed inside of Jesus, it was going to abort the seed that Jesus had inside of her. 